Well, hello, my loves, and happy Sunday. Lots of fun things today, more fun things today, more experimenting today. Couple things before we get started. Today is the day that the membership is open for new members. We, ha we dive into some really fun topics. We do Q&As. We do monthly art journal prompts, 30-minute art journal prompts. We do all new workshops come right into the membership so you get everything for your monthly membership price. No extra cost. So if you're at all interested, you can check it out. I'll have the link below. Um, in the YouTube description box along with the supplies and the stencils that I use today and what else I have new stencils in the shop all week long prior to this Sunday that you're watching right now I've done a project I've done a video for five days we prep we get papers ready the first day and then we do four 30 minute journal pages super easy um, I do it in real time and I show you that a really great journal page can be made really quickly. So, and I use all the new stencils and they're all five by eights and I'll show you some today and I think I showed you some last week as well. So, um, membership and new stencils for you. Let's see. Anything else? I don't think so. So let's talk about what I've done and where we're going. So, so far on my journal page, I have put down some, um, I gessoed at first, and then I put down with some texture paste, Nova Color texture paste. I used a couple of the stencils to create some texture, and I used my palette knife to kind of skip out some of that stenciling with the texture paste so that it kind of blends it out and gives it a really, really rough feel. And that is all I've done so far. <clears throat> So, um, what I plan to do, <laughs> this, and I've, I've gone back and forth a couple of times and get a new idea, and I'm like, oh, that'll be cool, oh, that'll be cool, and I'm like, stick with the plan, Sean, stick with the plan. Then, I, then I'm like, wait, um, this is all about play. That's what my journey has been with all along. It's okay to think outside the box. So I'm just going to think outside the box, and we'll see how it goes. I'm not going to play it safe. Because I was going to just go back to what I know, and I'm not going to do that. Because we're all learning and growing, and this is my season of curiosity. So, uh, this is going to be a real abstract page, and I'm going to be exploring my colors of the green and the blue. My Payne's Gray, what, here it is. My Payne's Gray, and this is olive green light or like a green gold. These two colors are fantastic and I want the more I continue to explore these colors the more I can push them I can try new colors with them different things like that as I begin to explore this color combination now I think I might throw in a tiny bit of burnt sienna and some magenta I was thinking I, I went I've gone back and forth because I'm like, I, I don't know if magenta is going to go. Because I did think about prism violet because this color looks really good with both of the Payne's gray and the green gold. So we'll see once we get there. That's kind of my plan. Um, I will be using gesso for, for some color. And I will be using some unbleached titanium to kind of mute that down along with some raw umber to kind of, you know, it's got to have some grunginess, right? But I'm going to be working across my page and creating somewhat abstractly with a lot of papers. And so my thought process with the papers is, so I have out here some um, pattern paper that I want to stencil on. Some I want to use for just the, the images, but some of the blank spaces, like I got this one out because it's got some blank space in it. I thought it'd be cool to try and stencil on that and then be able to tear it and put it down so that I've got a really kind of interesting shade of color paper. And yet it still shows through the background and the color that's on the background. So that's kind of my thought with that. I might actually do that on tissue paper too. So I have some tissue paper out and then I also have some deli paper out um, because I wasn't sure if I would stencil on tissue or deli paper, most likely tissue paper. 
then what I did was I have these two sheets here and this is the one I'm going to show you. I This is deli paper and all I did was I took some raw umber and some gloss medium, not matte medium, but gloss medium. And I mixed those together and I, I on the front I painted that front with the gloss medium and the little bit of raw umber. Then I dried that. Then I turned it over and I painted the back with gloss medium. And what that does is it makes it really transparent. And I love that. And so this is one I did earlier. This one here, it's a little bit lighter. And I, and I wanna show you. So my plan is to use this kind of as a backdrop to put this on. So you can see, you can see how, how see-through it becomes. This is a lighter color one. I'm not sure which one I will use yet, but what I thought was, and this is also going along with my um, one of my inspiration projects that I did, the journal page, that had all the different layers that I kind of went back to my designing days. And um, what, I don't know, let's see. What it, I think it was the last one I did. I'll show it to you. Yeah, this one. Pretty sure it was this one. Yeah, this one where I just layered on top of layer on top of layer of paper. And I love that so much. And that's like deep within my roots of creativity that I thought I would try to do, you know, I'll go along with that theme, carry that out a little bit more, but more expressive in my style um, with some abstract and some fun, um, you know, stenciling, that kind of thing. So I thought I would stencil on top of this my, my focal image, and then layer it with paper paper or papers underneath. So that's my thought on that. Uh, I have, let me move this out here. I got a lot of stuff out here. I have some, vin some other vintage papers on my desk and I have two, what did I do with them? Oh, here they are. I have two um, vintage wallpapers. They're real subtle that I want to use, and that can be part, that could be part of this layering process that I do for my focal point. I'm not exactly sure yet, but these two, this sheet here, and this um, script will be available in the resource library, along, and it will also be in the membership as well. So those will be available to you. I do have my number, my vintage number sheet out. Both the subscriber library and the membership have this sheet in their collage papers. And then I have some other random things that um, I have found in my stash. Just random bits and papers and things like that. Okay, then, I know, I have so many ideas. And this is the hard part is like, don't put all of the ideas in one piece, John. Just like simmer down a minute. But I have all of these um, tissue paper pieces that I showed off the stencils for the projects all week long and what I used in our projects. And I'm probably going to throw in a few of these as well. We'll see. But I have those on the ready. And then I have the stencils that I think I will be using that I pulled that kind of spoke to me. My larger circle one. This is the May Flowers 2, I think. This is the carved carved pods, carved something. Um, this is the butterfly and this is going to be my focal point. And then I have the boulders that I already used and I have the little the little um, like ver multi circles that I've used. And then I have my um, background word words um, that I will be using and I want to title this piece Courage. And part of the reason I I thought about that is the courage to experiment, to play, to step outside our comfort zone. And I think the butterfly, there's such a strength in butterflies. They're so delicate and beautiful. And yet what they go through their journey to, you know, working their way out of the cocoon and into the world um, just makes me think of courage. And so that is, that's my plan. Um, I will be using most likely some soft pa pastel pencils or some soft pastel sticks and Liquitex fluid matte medium for sure because I'm going to be using light papers and tissue papers and different things like that and you need that fluid matte medium to um, make those papers go transparent and not tear them. 
Um, if I have any other heavier papers, which I don't think I will, I, I can use matte gel. Um, I told you the paints. I, my charcoal pencil. Oh, the other thing I want to use too is my Stabilo All pencil because I want this to, I really want this to feel abstract and flowy and yet have some real defined kind of fun areas. I may use some acrylic ink. I'm almost out of my sepia. What did I do with that? I have my sepia. And then I also have some high flow, some shading gray high flow. I might throw in a little bit of either ink or high flow in there depending on where it goes because I have an idea and once you get going you know things always change a little bit but um, I think that is it for what I have planned for this page okay so that is that's my idea we'll see we'll see how it goes you always you just have to try and that's part of that courage process that's part of that um, be willing to not have something work for something else to come together. That courage, and, and that is, that's our art and that's life too. I mean, I swear everything that I do here applies here over and over and over again. And sometimes that courage factor, and when I talk about the butterfly and I think about all that they have to, they have to work and struggle their way out of the cocoon, Sometimes that's what we have to do too. Um, especially over the last four months, that's what it's felt like within my creative process. And I've worked my way out and now I'm flying free and I'm, I'm just throwing paint everywhere. And sometimes that's my life too. And possibly yours, I'm pretty sure, where it just feels like it's work all the time. It's hard all the time. But that courage factor of continuing to keep going. Rest, yes. Take care of ourselves, yes. But continue to show up, continue to do the things, continue to work on yourself, to work on your relationships, to work on your job, whatever it might be. That courage to do that day after day, not really knowing what the timeline is, that's really hard. And it takes a lot of courage to do that. And um, I, everything that I do within my art practice always, always applies to my life. And that's one of the things that I love so much about creating is how it, it reflects our soul and infects our soul. So as we continue to play and work and fuss through all of the ugly art, same thing in life. All of the mistakes or the decisions or the whatever it might be in life, we continue to work through that until we have come to a place of freedom. And there's still always courage, even in the freedom. Like when I was talking about how I had to talk to myself and say, Sean, you know, stick with the plan and then don't stick with the plan. There's a back and forth there. There's some struggle there, but there's courage still in that process to keep going instead of stopping, instead of being too afraid of moving forward because you go back and forth, just have some courage and take one step at a time. That's what I'm going to do right now and that's what we can do in our life. So that is my message to myself, the message of this page and maybe a message for you as well. All right, my loves, don't forget the membership and new stencils in the shop. And if you haven't checked out all the projects that we did this last week, I hope you do. They are some good, good, good ones. I was like, dang, I did, I did them super fast. Really, like not thinking fast. And they were some of my best journal pages. So take that to heart, right? Stop overthinking things. Um, all right, my loves, I hope you have a wonderful Sunday. I hope it's restful and peaceful. I hope you have courage today in whatever endeavors, creatively or life, I hope you have courage today. And um, I hope that you always, always know that you are loved. <laughs>